In this video, I'll talk about selling your house while in an active Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Hi, I'm Scott Adams, an attorney in Alabama, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for checking it out. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and that notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Well, this doesn't come up too terribly often, but it does come up sometimes where someone has filed a chapter 13 bankruptcy case they were behind on their house they make a decision that hey i just can't afford the house anymore and i need to put it up for sale that's one scenario another scenario may be is that the house is up for foreclosure and they were trying to sell it before the foreclosure and they filed a chapter 13 bankruptcy to stop the foreclosure and they end up getting a buyer for the house a few months later or three or four months later one of the questions from prospective clients is is can i sell my house i've got I've listed it for sale so typically the answer is, the short answer is yes, but what I wanna to do today is go over five things that I've got a thought process here and when we're analyzing how this is gonna affect the case, what to look out for, and you wanna stick around to the end because the fifth one is super important and I don't want you to miss out on the fifth one. The first one is, is would be something simple, right? As you would think about is you're in bankruptcy, you gotta get court permission. So if you're gonna sell an asset of the bankruptcy estate, you've got to seek court permission. How is that done? Well, you file a motion with the court to seek approval to sell the real estate. Secondly is normally there's a real estate contract that goes along the way when purchasing real estate. And I always recommend to my clients that they put a contingency clause in the real estate contract that says something to the effect of that this contract is contingent upon obtaining bankruptcy court approval. That way, if the bankruptcy court doesn't approve the sale, there's the out for the contract. Didn't get bankruptcy court approval. Number three is one consideration is what happens to the sales proceeds? Thinking about that is right, is most some people want to be able to keep the money to either purchase another home. And again, this is after paying off the mortgage on the property. They want to use the sales proceeds just to pay off the bankruptcy case. And that will really depend. So whether or not someone can keep the sales proceeds may depend on that state's exemptions. Some states have better homestead exemptions than other states. And so part of that may boil down to is what is the homestead exemption? What is the person allowed to keep? You know over and above the homestead exemption, it's very likely that those proceeds will go to either increase the amount of money that's being paid to the unsecured creditors, or it may go toward paying off the case in general. So that's another factor to consider is what's gonna happen to these sales proceeds. A fourth factor to consider is how's it gonna affect planned payments? So if the house is sold, and let's say the mortgage payments are $1,500 a month, now where is the extra $1,500 gonna go? That's something that's gotta be taken into factor as well. How does that affect planned payments? And so the fifth one is the really the one kind of that I wanna make sure that I'm talking about and that you understand is that when you go to pay off a mortgage, what do you normally request from the mortgage company is a payoff statement. And a payoff statement shows what is the principal balance. And the payoff statement also does is it, it usually gives a date. For example, let's say today's August the 1st, the payoff statement may be good through August 31st or, or September 1st and what they, you know, and then they amortize or they give a per diem if it's paid off after that of how much more the payoff may be after that. But one of the things I wanted to point out is that especially while in bankruptcy is that I ask my clients to request an itemized payoff statement because what we're looking for is what I'm looking for in the itemized statement is are there any hidden fees that are showing up in the payoff statement that weren't included in the bankruptcy or disclosed in the bankruptcy or that wasn't provided for in the proof of claim? Little things like that, because when you pay off the mortgage, if the mortgage is satisfied or paid off through the sale and these fees are not disputed in the bankruptcy court or if it's not paid off under protest, you may waive your right to later dispute these fees. And so if we know there's fees out there and my client doesn't want to hold off on the sale or you know we're gonna look at paying off this mortgage under protest with a full reservation of rights so we can preserve this, we may bring something in bankruptcy to in front of the bankruptcy court to raise these issues at the time of the motion to seek approval of the sale. There's different things that we're gonna be looking at, but I think the key here is requesting that itemized payoff statement so that you'll know that the fees are being charged. If you just request a, just a plain old payoff statement, you're not gonna know if there's any fees that have not been approved by the court or disclosed in the court. So again, 
these things can be complicated. I just wanted to point this out that, you know, at least in where, where I practice, we see the, these are typical motions that are filed. If you're in Alabama and you're wondering what some of your options are, click on the link below. Be glad to talk to you. Hope this information was helpful. Until next time.